right now we're going to just go through some exercises, uh, practice doing confidence intervals. I'm not going to give you all the breakdown for every one of these practice exercises, but if you can do these exercises, you're in a pretty good position to pass that part of the exam. Uh, this is just a funny joke from XKCD about confidence intervals. Um, let's get moving here. So exercise number one, actually the numbers on the exercises are crazy, so don't pay attention to them in this. Uh, consider a poll about ice cream consumption, sample size of 500, 500 individuals, it's people, and what they're measuring is the number of ice cream cones per year. So it's going to be like an average of an average, because each person, well, not really, it's going to be an average of the number of ice cream cones per year. So the mean number of ice cream cones per year is 42.3 here. The standard deviation, which we know for some weird reason, is 12.1. Find the 95% confidence interval for this estimate. I'm going to go through the example here, go through the solution. Um, here's the formula. And the stuff we plug into it, first of all, we need to know, well, maybe not first, but at some point, we need to plug in the z-score here. 95% confidence interval with the normal approximation to echo confidence intervals, you get a 1.96 z-score. So that's the raw value, the uh, absolute value of it, and we'll have a positive and negative version with this plus and minus here. We're going to draw our confident or our sampling distribution, the sampling distribution of means, and I indicate that by putting this little x bar there, saying this is not a distribution of raw scores, this is a distribution of means, and I am aware of that, Mr. Professor, sir. I'm going to indicate the confidence level, 95%. I'm going to indicate my alpha level divided into two pieces. Alpha is 5%. I'm using percent instead of proportion. You can flip flop back and forth as long as you know what you're doing. I put my z-scores in there because that's what cuts off my alpha level. They should be right there, cutting off the alpha in the tails. And I'm writing down some information about this. So my z-score is 1.96. So here's, my, here's how I set up the confidence interval calculations. My mean, plus or minus my z-score, times, all in parentheses, the standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of 500. That gives us a margin of error of 1.06 and our confidence interval of 41.24 and 43.36. That's a pretty small confidence interval, really, because we have a massive sample size, 500. So that was a very small standard error of the mean, and therefore 1.96 of those was still pretty small. So exercise number two. Dr. J studies bats. He's recorded the frequencies of 228 bat calls in New Mexico, and the mean is 34.7 kilohertz. He knows the mean for bats in Arizona is 39.1 kilohertz, and that the, bat, the Arizona bats have a standard deviation of 2.1. So he's going to assume that 2.1 is also a reasonable estimate for the standard deviation for the New Mexico bats, because at this point we need a population standard deviation to do these problems. We won't always, but for right now we do. And that's actually not the craziest assumption in the world. So calculate the 90% confidence interval for his sample, and also compare it to the Arizona average. So moving on to the solution here. Think about that, compare it to the Arizona average. Think, think about what that means, and we'll talk about that a bit. This is kind of a hypothesis testing thing. So I'm going to draw multiple distributions here. I've got the distribution of raw scores uh, with a standard deviation estimated of 2.1 kilohertz and a mean of 34.7, because that came from our sample. And we'll say that that's the population standard deviation and the population mean that these, bat, that these 228 bat calls came from. So the sampling distribution of all possible sample means from sample sizes of 228 bats looks like this. The mean is the same as this mean down here. The means are the same. I do them vertically to just line them up and remind myself it's the same number line, same mean. The standard deviation of this distribution is 0 0.14. So we got that by taking our estimated population standard deviation, dividing it by the square root of the sample size, n equals 228, and calculating out let me get 0.14. So within that, <coughs> we find that this is our confidence limit, our confidence interval right here. The upper limit is 34.7 plus 1.65 times 0.14, so 1.65 standard errors. The lower limit is 34.7 minus 1.65 standard errors, and that's our confidence interval right there, those two numbers. Now, thinking about the Arizona bats, the Arizona bats had a mean frequency of about 39 kilohertz. 
that is nowhere inside this confidence interval. Before I did this, I wouldn't have known if that was a lot. I mean, you know it's more than 34. 39 is more than 35, right? But you don't know how much more. So now that we have this confidence interval, we can say 39 is nowhere in there. So we're about 90% 90, 90 confident that the true mean is probably somewhere in here. The true mean that these 228 bats calls came from, the true mean frequency of bat calls for these particular bats. That's our best estimate of where the true mean is. 39 is not in that best estimate. It's way over here somewhere. It's way up here. And so if that was the null hypothesis, that these bats actually came from the same population as the Arizona bats, then that would effectively be saying these bats came from a population with a mean of 39. I don't think that makes any sense because our confidence interval is really far away from 39. You'd have to go several more standard errors, like lots of them, to get to 39. So I would reject that hypothesis, and I would say the alternative hypothesis is supported, which is probably something like these bats are their own species. They're different species from the, from the Arizona bats. Yeah, that's how you can use this for confidence intervals, or confidence intervals for hypothesis testing. So back to the issue with the cable company. So you've got a sample of 200 cables, and the sample, um, and the average, uh, the, the sample length is 12, 1237 millimeters. And assume that we're, for some reason we know the population mean is 124 millimeters. Find the confidence interval for this, the 95 confidence interval for this mean of 120, or 1237 millimeters. Okay, ready to show the solution here. There we go. I'm not going to go through the calculations. I think you should be able to work that out at this point. But this dashed line down here, that's the raw score distribution. And this is so pointy in the middle that to show it with the raw score distribution, the raw score distribution has to be squished way, way, way down there. It's very low and very wide. So the confidence interval here is going to be 1219.8 12, to 1254.2. And any value outside that is not a plausible value. So maybe somebody had a hypothesis that the true mean is 1200. Maybe the machine says produces uh, cables with a length of 1200. Well, that doesn't seem believable because 1200 is not inside this confidence interval. So any value that's outside the confidence interval is not actually very believable as a candidate for the true mean. Anything inside the confidence interval is believable. So any, anything between these two numbers here is believable. Let's try this again. Same thing, but now do a 99% confidence interval. Okay, assuming you've worked things out, moving to the solution here. 99% confidence interval is bigger now. 1214.4 to 1260. So you get a slightly larger confidence interval. And you can see how things would change if there was any value. Let's go back here. The upper limit here is 1254.2. Uh, 1254 and now it's 1260. So if there was any value between 1254.2 and 1260 that was some sort of null hypothesis value, then we would retain the null hypothesis if we were using a 99% confidence interval to test things, but we would have rejected the null hypothesis if we'd used a 95% confidence interval. So those decisions are actually quite important. Here's another exercise, age. In this case, the sample is 81. So find a 95% confidence interval for the ages of the people in this city in New York. Okay, going to the solution now. Should have something like this, as long as I did the math right. 42.5 to 43.7. So if somebody said, I think our average age of our population is 45, you'd reject that, because that's not in our confidence interval. Or if somebody said, I think it's 40, you'd reject that. That's not in our confidence interval. If somebody said, I think our average age is about 43, you would not reject that because it's plausible. 43 is inside this confidence interval. So let's do the same thing, but with a, a, a narrower confidence interval, 90%. Moving on to the solution here. This is the answer that we would get. Things are a little tighter. Now it's 42.6 and 43.6. So just one year age difference between them with 90% confidence interval. So we're 90% confident that, confident that the true mean of people in our, in our community, the true mean age, is between 42.6 and 43.6. And our best estimate of what that age is, is 43.1 years old. All right, finishing up, and we'll be moving on with more stuff in the next video here, because we're not done yet.